Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University in Judas, issue number four of four. You need to pick up this comic book. So basically what happens here is that Judas is going to go down to the lowest portion of hell where Jesus is kept, where he knows Jesus has to be kept. And all these things are trying to follow him, but they're all terrified of him. They're terrified to go any further, right? So think about that. If you're placed in a certain part of hell and you know that the lower you get, the more frightening it gets, the more messed up it gets, the more painful and torturous it gets, you're not going to want to go. You're not going to want to budge one inch. So as Judas is walking down into the belly of the beast, so to speak, nothing that that you know is reaching for him is going to inch towards him interesting i like that that's actually really cool dude so he finally gets all the way down to the bottom and he finds jesus and jesus is just like blinded with you know there, there's no hope here so the lowest pit of hell is the area where god can see you least i guess you're like completely obfuscated totally obscured so yeah he's uh he's stuck down here he's stuck on a tree uh, the tree of woe, I guess, and um, Judas pulls him down. And he, he himself is starting to lose a little bit of hope. He walks away, but then he comes back. But he starts to see the story. He starts to see the picture a little bit better. He starts to see that when um, when God sent Abraham the message to kill his firstborn son, he wasn't testing uh, he sees it differently. He wasn't testing Abraham so much as he was testing himself to see if a father could sacrifice his son. Okay, that's actually kind of interesting. That's an interesting new take on this. So, of course, like, I'd already figure out what's going to happen by now. I didn't realize the full extent of it. Uh, Jesus actually gets taken. Judas takes Jesus out uh, up towards the top, and he's like, can you make yourself rise out of hell. He says, uh, only when all of my sins have been forgiven. He's like, you have sins? He says, I have only one, and it's you. He's like, can you forgive me? Dude, are you freaking kidding me right now? So <laughs> through it all, through Satan even saying, and like Satan's not, he's not vindictive in this. You know what I'm saying? Like you would think that maybe he is from, from the teachings that you get. When you actually just read the Bible, there's absolutely no reason for him to be vindictive. He just is. And, and this is kind of the way that he's portrayed here. He says, get them, stop them because he needs Jesus to stay down in hell because he doesn't want to be freed. Well, too late. Um, Judas does forgive Jesus and Jesus ascends. But then he looks down and he says, you know, I'm going to talk to her and I'll, you know, she'll say to me and blah, 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 whatever. Anyway, so she, um, she, so he leaves. And now at this point, um, he gets to, Judas gets to watch the rest of the story unfold. Him rising, him going out and, and speaking to the people again. And, you know, Christ is risen, all that stuff. And then, um, and then the the uh, final ascension. Uh, what's interesting is that then Judas' story continues, and he now becomes the shepherd of hell. So he starts comforting people who are mourning and, and all sorts of things like that. And it's really freaking beautiful, dude. This is awesome. Look, I'm not a Christian, okay? Not a particularly religious guy at all. And when I see something like this, when I read this, the story is broken, okay? The big story of the Bible, it is broken. There's so many flaws in it. But you know a really good way to fix it? Ask Jeff, uh, Jeff Loveness to come along and write something. Because this was good. This fixed so much of that story, man. This was great. I loved this. I absolutely loved this. I can't, I have no choice but to give this an A+. This is a fantastic issue, a fantastic story. All four of these issues, man, I don't know if I would give this to somebody who's religious because boon, bane, but like there was just so many cool points touched in here. For instance, when Judas says at one point, nobody's named after me. Like, think about that. I don't know if anybody's named, um, what do you call it, Adolf anymore. They're, they're, I'm sure there's probably some parents out there who named their kids Adolf, you know, but for the most part, it's like, oh, why would you want to do that? <laughs> So I would be infinitely and forever infuriated at my parents if they named me that. You know, like the one parent for naming me, the other per the other parent for allowing it. No way, dude. I'd never, ever. So I could just imagine that here, you know, like that's that says something. It, it almost means nothing, but it does, doesn't it? 
Uh, anyway, this was fantastic. I am thoroughly impressed. You know, uh, Black Panther said somebody get this man a shield. No, somebody get Jeff Loveness and 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 the the, the Re Rebecca. Uh, I don't know how to. I think that's how you pronounce the name. But somebody get these people another comic book. <laughs> that was just great. All right, guys. Professor Bell, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.